Hello, in this PlayStation Classic hacking video, I am going to show you how to hack your PlayStation Classic so it can run RetroArch. Yes, that is correct. RetroArch, the, you know, the worldwide amazing universal emulator is on PlayStation Classic now. It, it works with so many of the emulators, all the ones that I've tested it works with and it, 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 like, it works really well. This is still technically pre-release software. So, you know, as anything, when you're hacking, you know, your system, you need the potential to avoid warranty and all of that, you know, that stuff. Um, but this is pre-release software. So I'll force let you know about that. But honestly, I've had no issue with it. It's been stable. It's been really, really good. So first of all, you want to make sure you've hacked your PlayStation Classic using the Bleem Sync hack. If you haven't, don't worry, I've got you covered. I've got videos to set it up on Windows, on Mac, and on Linux. I'll provide a link to each one of them along with this video. Even though I'm doing this on Windows, once you've set up, you know, Bleem Sync, the actual setup process of RetroArch doesn't matter what system you do it on. Because there's no executable to actually to actually install or you know run. You can do it on any system. Okay, so with that out of the way, you want to go to your web browser, open up this link. I'm gonna provide a link to it in the description. Scroll down and download both of these. So if you click this one, you'll just start downloading it. I'm gonna cancel it because I've already got it downloaded. Click this one, and this these are all your cores. You need a core for each you know console that you want to emulate. You can download the individual cores if you want it, but honestly, I just recommend downloading all the cores. It's 68 meg zipped up, unzipped. I think it's about 160 megabytes. It's not that big at all. That would be my recommendation. I've already got everything downloaded. So if I go to my folder here so i've got a game crash bandicoot and i've actually got another game as well so i'll put that here so the n64 game and what you want to do is unzip this boot menu bundle file so if we just go to extract all and um, yep that's fine click extract this shouldn't take very long at all and then we'll need to add this to our usb stick that has already been hacked to have Bleem Sync on there. Do, 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 do. A few more seconds. There we go. Okay. So you want to copy all of this. You want to go to your USB stick, paste it here. And when it gets towards the end, it's going to say that there's about, I think, four files. Might be more, might be less, depending on what version you're using. But there's a few files that, you know, already exist. You want to overwrite them. And I'll show you. You just want to confirm with the overwriting process. You can still use Bleem Sync, you know, in the way that you normally would. And you can have RetroArch running alongside it as well. So it says four files with the same names. Click Replace. And now we can actually technically get into RetroArch. But because we don't really have any cores, I think there's a couple that come with it. We're going to add all those other cores that we downloaded. So extract this file. And it's about 160 megabytes in total. And go on to here, go into this folder, copy every single file from there. Now go to RetroArch, go to doc config, go to RetroArch again, go to cores. There's already a PlayStation, which is the PCSX core, and the Mupin 64 Plus core, which is the N64. So if I paste it here and same thing again, towards the end, it's going to say, do you want to overwrite two, two files of the same name? Those are those two cores that were already there by default. So if we just wait about again, another 20 seconds or so, this will be copied over. And then there's really only one extra step, which in a way it's optional, in a way it's not. And the last step is just adding games. And I'll just show you how to add that. It's optional because I guess you could go there and start using it with the core, but you got no games to play. So we need to do that. So just re click replace. Now that's all done. Now I've already got some games here. I've got N64, Super Mario 64, and I've got the Game Boy Advance version of Crash Bandicoot The Huge Adventure. Well, Huge Adventure was a 
GBA exclusive anyway. It's pretty good game, especially for back then. So what you want to do, you can actually place these files wherever you want. What I would recommend is going to your RetroArch folder here, create a folder called Game, because this is a general format for RetroArch in general. So go to Games, and here, create a folder for all of the consoles that you are emulating. You don't need to go through that ROM list and create every one. Just do it as you go along. So we've got N64. You can name it whatever you want. I've got what well, we've got Game Boy Advance. Now in, in here, you just add your ROM. So here, I'll copy it and I'll paste it here. And for N64, I'll do the same. You can rename the files if you want. There is no naming convention or you know specific name that you need. You can go crazy. And that is it. That's all you have to do. We're actually done with hacking it. If you have any questions, feel free to pop me a message. I'm going to switch over to the PlayStation Classic now, where you can see me running it and showing you how to you know, navigate the retro arc menu. Uh, like I said, any questions, feel free to pop me a message, and I'll see you at the PlayStation Classic. Okay, so we're on the PlayStation Classic part of this retro arc hacking tutorial so what you want to do is make sure your console is disconnected from the power which mine is so leave the hdmi connected leave controller in port one connected you want to get your usb stick with the bleem sync and the retro arc put that right into here into port two then plug power back in let me find where the port is plug it back in and i'll, I'll leave it hanging that's fine not much way to it wait till the orange light comes back on and what you want to do is press that button and then that will turn the console on and what i'm going to do is just reorientate the phone my camera so you can see everything okay so i'm just about to go and press the button down here so if i press it like so and now if I just tilt this up. We've got that classic tune playing. And what will appear is two options, RetroArch and Bleem Sync. We're going to select RetroArch. The one that's yellow is the one that's highlighted. So RetroArch, let's click X. And now from here, we're in, we are in RetroArch. If you want to know more about RetroArch, there are tutorials online talking about it. Actually, one sec, I'm literally just about to, I'm doing this on my bed, but I'm I've stood up now so the camera shouldn't shake. If you want to know more about RetroArch, there are more tutorials online covering covering it. But just a quick overview: the thing that you need to do is load a core. So go to load core, and if we load N64 core, which is Mupen. Go down, new point 64, click that. That's loading now. You can see that in the top bottom left, you know, just below the frame rate, that it has loaded. Then go to load content, go to forward slash, go to wherever you put your games, and your USB stick will be media. So anywhere here for our games are in RetroArch, games, N64. I've only got the one in there, but let's launch this one up. So if I click X, Click X again, and wait, you'll launch up Mario. It's me, Mario. It is indeed. Okay, so there's one little thing I want to quickly show you, and this isn't just related. I'm going to turn the volume down. This isn't just related to Mario. This isn't just a problem with Mario. I would say pretty much all Nintendo 64 games and potentially other retro consoles as well. So let me just show you once it loads, the actual gameplay aspect of it will be loading in a few seconds. Mario's gonna pop out of the pipe, out of the ground, and then I'll show you the little problem that occurs. Okay, so as he comes out, you'll notice something. 
if I bring the controller into view for click X, he jumps. If I try and press the D-pad, nothing's happening. And that is because there's no analog stick. The N64 had a you know a central analog stick which you used for movement to be able to you know play these games. If you press select and start on the keyboard, or I mean on the controller. Now that'll take you to the menu. You can do a bunch of things here like save states, but so you just press circle to go back, go to the settings area, go to input, go to input using one binds, go all the way down to where it says left analog, click that, click X. Now if you click right to say with the left, down and up. Now if we go all the way back, now if we just press those two buttons again, we're back in. As you can see, I can move around now and I can play not only this game, any other game now that requires an analog stick. And you can modify the control to your preference. 